I'm Peter, uh, and I'm going to present the meta techniques failure for you now. We're going to start off by presenting uh, a definition of a meta technique. So, a meta technique is something that gives you more information about the story events to the players than they get through the experiences of their characters. We talked about this before through the, some of the LARPs you have made, uh, been into, the difference between what a participant or player experience than, than what the character uh, experience through, through a LARP. And I'm now going to uh, show you this so it becomes clear. So this could, for an example, be communication in the LARP between the participants when the same thing it's not communicated between the characters. So, a scene is going on, and between a scene is going on between two characters. As an example, Jack and Bob are doing something, but the players are communicating more information. A scene without the meta technique could look like this. I am now Jack. Bob. Yes, this is Bob. Hi. Hello, how? Hi. How are you? Good. And uh, how are you? I'm uh, good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Not so uh, everyone got that scene. That was without meta techniques. Now let's add a layer of meta onto this. We put in a monologue. Uh, and I will take away that slide because it's in the way. Uh, hello, how are you? Hi, uh, I'm fine. How, how are you? Monologue? Wow. I just got a new sailboat, but I'm too shy to tell Peter that I really want to invite him to come with me on the sailing boat. Yeah, so... Uh, Bob, the character Bob, really wants the character of Jack to follow in on the sailing boat. But I, I as a player, don't know this. Oh, no, no, I as a player got the information, but my character doesn't know this. So because of I know this uh, as a player, I can, I can use that in play. So if I would now continue the scene after he just hold the monologue. Uh, well, do you know what? Uh, I have, uh, I have nothing to do uh, this afternoon. <laughs> really? Uh, you, nothing? You're all free? Yeah, I, I got some shit, but I got cancelled. Do you want to do something? Yeah, that, that, that would be excellent. Do you, what, what do you want to do? Uh, no, if you have any suggestion, I, I think just hang out. Maybe, um, maybe go sailing? I love sailing. <laughs> so this was a monologue. We, we as players communicated what our characters were feeling. I think you got that one. This was done in one of Destiny's Meet a lot. It could also be additional events that doesn't fit in to the LARP time and space continuum. I will now explain what that means. Example, scene play. Playing scenes from outside the time frame, such as a memory or a possible future. This was done a lot in Huntsville, that some of you, or I, I think most of you should have played, when you did the flashback scenes. You paused, uh, sort of the paused, the current uh, time frame of the LARP, and you played a flashback scene that happened before. So that's not in the, the, the current time frame. We took something more in there. Or you can, play a, you can play someone's dream, or you can say like, oh, we could, we could have done a scene with, uh, with Jack and Bob, which was like, uh, play a scene, we play a scene how, about when we have sailed our 10th uh, trip and we're so happy to sail together. What a lovely future. So why do we do this? I would claim that meta techniques strengthen the drama of the LARP. 
Uh, and you then need to ask yourself, how much meta do you want? The fader has a maximum of, of um, intrusive and discrete. I will go through that slide really, really soon, but, but not on the, on the fader is if you even want meta techniques or if you don't. So you just need to think about that. Uh, as an example of having a lot of meta techniques, um, there is uh, When a Destiny is Meet. This is like a very minimalistic game, but it has a lot and lot and lot of meta techniques in there. Or a game like 1943, where there is no meta techniques, no monologues, no flashback scenes, not any of that. Just very, like, you just need to think about, do I even need meta techniques? Um, and that's, that's just something as an organizer you need to decide. I wouldn't say that you ever really need, but I like to add them to my games because I think it, it can add some. So you use, just need to think about what's relevant for your LARP. So the fader is really about intrusive meta techniques and discrete meta techniques. An intrusive meta technique could be the flashback scenes of Huntsville. Because what happens when we add a flashback scene is that we, we, pause, the, we pause the events of the LARP and we do the scene. After the, the, the flashback is played, we continue. But it's intrusive because it pauses it for everyone. Another way of using meta techniques is discrete. In the LARP till death do us part, uh, the LARP about the wedding, you could also play flashback scenes, you could play dream scenes and memory scenes. But these were played out in a black box used in the way that there is a room on the location of the LARP that was uh, in a, yeah, you needed to walk down a few stairs and then there was this room said, said black box and you could go in there with, uh, with some co-players or with an organizer, and then you could play a flashback scene. You could think like, oh, I really need to, I really would like to play how my character fell in love or something. And then you could ask that player discreetly to, to join, join you in that scene, and you went to that room and played it. The difference here is that in Huntsville, all of those scenes are played for everyone, but until that there was part, they were only visible for the, the players who were in those scenes. So they didn't pause it for anyone else. So intrusive techniques pauses the events of the LARPs for all players if, you're, if it's to the max. Uh, and they are visible techniques. While discrete techniques, if it's to the bottom, are not passing the LARP and they are invisible if they are to the, the bottom. And they could of course be in the middle and there's several examples of that. So if it's maximum to the intrusive part, we have a lot of transparency. And I think this is a great word. Many other speakers have talked about transparency. But uh, a good example is the transparency of me now knowing that, uh, that Jack here really wants to, to go and sailing because I heard, heard, heard his inner thoughts. And I can use that information. Or uh, if we play a, a flashback scene and I can use the information I learned that. We have, we have transparency and we share the information among the players. It's also, if it's to the max, it's really easy to use. In the example we did here, any player could say monologue and then do a monologue. It's, or in Huntsville, you can do a flashback scene whenever. They're really, it's, it's like really close to you. So when a destiny is meet, the director can just say it. It becomes really close. Uh, really easy to uh, to just use them. But to the max of the intrusive, you cannot opt out. As Johanna talked about the opting in and opting out in the safety talk. Um, I cannot choose to not see the flashback scene in Huntsville. Me as a player cannot choose to not see this because it's in the only room. I mean, I have no choice. It could also break the illusion. If I'm really, really deep into my character and then this flashback scene happens in front of me and I'm like, 
dude, come on, why, why this fourth flashback now? I was really into doing my stuff over here, and now I have to listen to this. So that could be a problem, and you need to think about that. If it's uh, to the minimum, if it's discrete, there's an absolute opt-in. I, I can go to the black box if I want to play it. I, re I can choose. Um, also, of course, maintaining the illusion instead of breaking the illusion. Everything going on as it was. Uh, the events of the LARP, yes, continuing. But we have less transparency. If a, if a flashback scene is played in the black box, maybe that was really good information for my character if I would know that that memory is being played out. The, someone talking about their life story, maybe that was really good information for me to use. But since I'm not in that room seeing the scene, I don't get that information. That could be fine, but this is what happens if you share this information and not get it. A really short note could also be like if you have a black box um, or another place where you play out a lot of scenes. Sometimes <coughs> players tend to be a lot in that location and maybe not so much in the location where, where you sort of play the rest of the LARP. And maybe you go around and like, where, where are the other players? Uh, it does, very seldom is a big problem, but it's something you need to think about. And this could be totally fine, but you need to think about it. Because sometimes it's really fun to play scenes, but it, it can be like, if you cannot play with your mother because she's playing some memories all the time, then... Yeah. So... We don't ask ourselves, why do we use the meta? <laughs> well, I would say some really nice stuff. You can deepen the characters and the relations. I think you sort of get that point. We, we can add more layers of the characters by just during the game having a monologue and expressing more feelings and deepen it for yourself and for the others. And also talking about the relations to the other players. We, change, we can change the mood and the pacing. Like the mood, if I, I learn as a game master and when a listen is meet that I see that the player is sad and I make that player do a monologue out loud for everyone. And maybe everyone becomes a bit more sad because that player talks about how sad he is. Or the pacing, which is a really fancy word for like the speed of the game. And the game master with meta techniques can change how the speed is going, if I want the game to go slower or faster. It can expand the world and the time frame, choosing playing memories <laughs> back and widen it. It gives us more tools for the game master, but also for the participants to influence the LARP. I can, we all can put in stuff, and, and meta techniques can be a lot more than just displaying scenes and monologues. You can do a lot of stuff with it, but I'm not going to go into everything you can do now. Also, meta techniques can be really fun, and I think that's a good reason. So thank you.